God natt Sverige ikväll led Zeppelins legendariska sångare Robert Plant. After about the first three minutes I realized where we were and what we were doing. Om världens bästa rocklåt Stairway to Heaven, om rollen som förebild för miljoner unga musiker och om de personliga tragedierna. Välkomna till Godnatt Sverige allihopa. Från och med nu så ska jag prata på utrikeska för vi har nämligen fint besök från England här idag. We have had a lot of interesting news lately here in Sweden. The Social Democrats continues to fall behind in the opinion polls and Sonny Ericsson first quarter net profit fell to 32 million euros from 82 million a year ago. But most important, I was appointed by a tabloid called Aftonbladet to veckans babe. Welcome, Robert Plant, to Sweden. Thank you. Very nice to be back here. I will explain uh, Veckans Babe to you. It's a uh, babe of the week, weekly babe kind yeah. of thing. And it's uh, almost as uh, winning a Grammy for best album. Oh, really? And yes. it's based on what? Uh, I have no idea. Oh, OK. That mm? sounds like good TV. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, and <clears throat> what's, what's your, uh, which one of your awards or, or achievements are you mostly proud of? Um, being a grandfather. Grandfather, mm. not stay away. No, stay awake, but stay, not grand. <laughs> stay away, stay away to heaven. I <laughs> no, was. no, I don't think that's an achievement. That's just somewhere along the line. All right. That's just a little place to visit in the middle of a long uh, romance with music, I guess. But being a grandfather is not really your achievement. Well, it's my but achievement that I'm still around to see ah, it. Okay, okay. You know, if you think uh, it's been quite a wild life, and in the middle of all the musical adventures. Mm. I suddenly find that I'm at the top of the tree and uh, kids are coming up and saying, well, grandfather, what was it like in the desert? And what were you doing when you did that stuff on the TV then? And uh, all that, so it's good, f it's funny. It's good fun. uh, what do you learn them? What um, do you say to them? Don't do this and that. And I say, don't forget your manners, uh -huh. always respect your elders mm -hmm. and don't bother me. All right, good. <laughs> Uh, your new album will be released uh, May 4th. It's called Mighty Rearranger. Uh, are you the Mighty Rearranger? No, but I have connections. Uh -huh. What is a Mighty Rearranger? Fate. It's not even a word. It's fate. Fate? Yeah. Okay. It's like everything that we do and everything that we try and avoid and all the, all the, the uh, our future and our luck, it's kind of, it's already pre-made. And there's a song called Mighty Rearranger, which gives you some clues and some uh, ideas of how to deal with the passing of time. It's an interesting and, and a humorous song. Mm. Um, the crowd in Sweden, to the crowd, you're still very much Robert Plant, the Led Zeppelin singer. Yeah. Uh, my mom almost started to cry when she heard uh, I would uh, be visited by you. Uh, do you still consider yourself a sex symbol? Well, I don't know what that is, really. I, I, it, um, it's a very difficult term to deal with. I mean, you were babe of the week or babe of the... Uh, yeah, yeah, weekly babe. Weekly whatever. babe. Veckans babe. OK, well, that sounds... Well, I can be veckans, uh, whatever it is, symbol. But um, it was always a bit of a joke, the whole idea of anybody being anything particular. Why? Because what, where, where is... This, how do you substantiate that? How does anybody know what we are or what we do. Um, it's, it's quite unusual to consider like Rod Stewart, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. maybe, or uh, Johnny Depp, you know, good looking guys, but um, sex symbols, yeah, but you got to catch them off duty, <clears throat> not when they're going, baby, baby, baby. But it wasn't a joke to my mother. She really considered you a sex symbol. Well, I'll have to find out what she felt. Yes. In fact, you should find out. You're her daughter. Yes. I will ask her then. <laughs> um, we will talk uh, more about your looks later in the show. Uh, yeah. But <clears throat> a great sign of success is that uh, cover and tribute bands all over the world play your music. H how is it to be played so much? Well, as you said, I'm known mostly in Sweden, I guess, for 
Yeah. Led Zeppelin. I mean, that's not the same in every country in the world. I, I have a, a career that's spanned nearly 40 years, but a lot of the time, 25 years ago, Led Zeppelin finished, but, mm -hmm. the, but the legend remained. And so if you see a tribute band, they're only going to be creating a tribute to something that stopped 25 years ago. So it's quite funny when you go into a club and you see somebody who's pretending to be me yeah. or somebody else from it that time. It must be weird. Well, it looks a little strange, to say the least. Uh, there's a tribute band in Sweden called the Tangerine. Have you heard them? No. No. Uh, you will soon, because they're with us. Uh, our um, trainee Kalle is in their studio right now. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Kalle, how can man class uh, Tangerine's... Uh, Uh, engagemang, är det liksom som ett smickrande intresse eller är det mer stalkeraktigt? Jag skulle nog säga att smickrande intresse vore årets understatement kan man säga. Jag befinner mig i fryshuset i en riktigt skön, typisk så här, replokal. Ni ser alla attraljer, sköna musiker. Det här, det är Jack, han är, det är hans band Tangerine. Jack, vad är det som är så stort med, med Led Zeppelin? Ja, för mig är Led Zeppelin var den största rockgrupp som har funnits. Uh, alla kallar dem en hard rock group, men för mig är det mycket mer. De spelar så mycket olika musical styles från uh, folk music, blues och musical influences från India till Nordafrika. Frågan alla svenska ställer sig alldeles just nu. Uh, hur många Led Zeppelin-konserter har du varit på? Uh, tyvärr, jag har aldrig sett Led Zeppelin, men jag har sett uh, Robert Plant och Jimmy Page fyra gånger. Och det var allt. Do your thing, boys. Kör hårt! <laughs> to the band later because they have a little surprise for you but have you ever heard a really lousy version of some of your songs oh yeah 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 of course Wh what did you do ah well I mean you have to have a sense of humor well, the, the, yeah. the last thing in the world you can really ever be is too serious about this about mm. the whole game I mean it's, it's good fun and if you can maintain the energy and the uh, the interest in it for the length of time that we do then you're either sad cookie with nothing else to do in life or you've got to have a sense of humor. So, mm. yeah, I heard Tiny Tim do a version of Stairway to Heaven, which was pretty... Uh, uh, how did it sound? It sounded pretty... Um, Stairway... Uh, no, no, it was, it was very sincere, but uh -huh. in, in a very sort of camp, non-musical way. Oh. And uh, I thought it was quite an did achievement. Did you pat him on the shoulder and say... Well, I thought about doing a duet with him. You yeah. did? Yeah, I, li I just like the Why? idea because I thought it was funny and I think I don't think there's anything wrong with a bit of poking a little bit of fun at something that becomes But like the royal family, you know? Oh, okay. We have a family in England called... Yes, the royal. They're, yeah, they're German, Greek yeah. people who are the kings and queens of England and uh, they're constantly being, you know, they're... There are a few royalists, but there are also people who think it's a bit ridiculous for them to be in that position. Well, so uh, I think maybe one or two rock songs have gone past the point of being... Bad. Yeah. So you get these occasional songs that you go, oh, no. Uh -huh. And you reach for the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Mm. So long as it's good fun, it doesn't matter. Did you visit Charles and Camilla's wedding? D did I... Visit oh, no, 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 no. You're not friends with the royal family. Well, I, uh, I did meet Charles and uh, Diana two or three times because I was involved in the very early days with what was called the Royal Trust, which Charles created to create, to develop the insides of some of our very bad cities mm -hmm. where we have a lot of um, crime and a lot of racial, uh, fra fractious racial problems. So he started these clubs where he would bring kids in off the street mm -hmm. to learn music, to learn talents one way or another. And myself and a lot of the artists at the time, we all gave our services free of charge. Mm. 
which was good. What are the chances of you becoming Sir Robert Plant? Very, very minimal. OK. Mm. Uh, let he me paid, I must say, he paid more attention to my wife. I was married. Oh, really? Yes, because he... Maureen? Yeah, because he walked down the line shaking hands with everybody. Mm -hmm. And I was married at the time to Maureen, who is a beautiful girl from India. Mm. She had a powder blue jumpsuit with a big belt. And he just turned and went, left us all, <laughs> and went straight to the woman and the beautiful belt. And I said, excuse me, sir, but you're supposed to be talking to us. You can keep your eyes off her. And he went, no, no, no. <laughs> Are you, were you jealous, really? No, no, I thought it was very funny. I liked the idea of him actually curving away yeah. from all those boring mm -hmm. old musicians who are all waiting to become knights anyway. Yeah. You know, a lot of them already are. But we were invited to play at the Queen's 50th uh, anniversary thing. and I That was 100 years ago. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's when the guy from Queen played on the roof. Oh, OK. Of the palace. Not very good. This is another concert. This is you. Uh, yeah. Playing with the Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that flower. <clears throat> why are all rockers so thin? Do you